الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed, all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, the gracious, the merciful, the master of the earths and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal. And the prayers of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh. وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين Indeed we bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah May the peace and blessings be upon our beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم I remind myself as always and remind everyone to be pious to be God conscious, to remember the Almighty Azza wa Jal in everything that you do, to heed the words of the Almighty Azza wa Jal when He orders us, when He says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqahti wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon Ya ayyuhalladina amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadim wa attaqullah inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon Oh, you believe, be God conscious and die in no way except in the way of Islam Oh, you believe, be God conscious and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, to absolve us from the hellfire, to keep us steadfast on his path and to grant us the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, this week I came from Istanbul visiting my parents and during the visit I had the blessings of attending two events that is the subject of what we hope to share today inshallah one was a meeting of the Council of European Muslims a gathering of the leadership of Muslims from 27 countries in the European Union MashaAllah, a beautiful site. One that I have attended in the past under different names. It used to be called Tihadul Munadamat al Islamiyah fi Europa and so on and so forth. And we come together to reflect upon the status of the Ummah and to reflect upon Muslims in the West and to reflect upon the future of Islam and our role in it and the future of bringing in this divine guidance into the humanity we live in and how do we bring about that transformation how do we be the agents of change the ones that will be inshallah the deliverers of the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this 21st century and then in the evening there was an event of commemoration and remembrance of our late sheikh yusuf al-qaradawi rahimahullah in which the leaders who have been blessed with his presence with them for so many years. He was one of the people that established what's called Al-Majlis Al-Urubi Lil-Ifta'i Wal-Abhath, the European Council for Fatwa and Research. He has been a mentor for practically all the leadership. He is the man who's witnessed almost a century long of the struggles of Islam after the fall of the Khilafah and after the rise of Islamic movements which have tried to bring back the centrality of Islam in our lives, to bring back, to make us the agents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us, the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the deen that's meant to be a guidance to all of humanity. And it was also a reflection of the difficult status of the ummah today, the difficulties that we see how far Islam is from the centrality of the lives of humanity. The plight of humanity when the divine guidance of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in the center, is not in the leadership. And it's something that for each one of us, 
We have to be reflective enough and we have to be serious enough about understanding the status of our ummah and the status of our ummah even in America here today. And the status of the believers in seeing how is it that we can bring about that transformation. What is my role? In addition to being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who attends the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who attends the, 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 special, the prayers of Fajr and Isha and so on and so forth, one who recites the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who lives by the guidance of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of their ability. What is it that they may be missing or what is it that requires of them the thinking and the reflection that's needed in order for us to be able to bring about that transformation in our ummah that is necessary. See, sometimes we can define our mission in life by the complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the utmost love of the Almighty Azza wa Jal in addition to searching for the will, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its implementation in our reality. Like in Arabic we say, كَمَالُ الْعُبُودِيَّةِ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى مَعَ تَمَامِ الْحُبِّ وَالْعَمَلُ عَلَى مَعْرِفَةِ وَإِنْفَاذِ مُرَادِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِهِ How can we define that in our own terms? How do we make it a reality? Not only the complete submission and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the essential foundation upon which this work begins, but it's also مَعْرِفَةِ وَإِنْفَاذِ مُرَادِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Recognizing what does it mean to be a Muslim, recognizing the purpose for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us the ummah of Tawheed, and not only recognizing it, but implementing it, bringing it about in a reality in which we feel content that we have done everything that we can in this short life of ours to be in full compliance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and wishes and astaghfirullah, wills and orders. And so there was a reflection on the advices. Shaykh Qaradawi, may Allah be pleased with him, has written before his passing 10 advices in which he wanted to summarize much of his lifelong experiences. And for those who know him, they know that he's been a prolific writer. He is a, one of the best scholars of the century in terms of knowledge and in terms of his command of the Sharia sciences and, and the ulum of Quran and so on and so forth. But he wasn't just that. He was somebody who worked in the field, somebody who, who has been struggling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who took up the cause of the ummah, who has reflected upon how best can we live by the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was, in addition to that, somebody who has always been thinking about ways to upgrade the status of the ummah. And when he worked with the European Muslims, and, and we have seen him in the West as well, and Dar al-Hijra, alhamdulillah, has been host to him and his visits. We're looking at a book that reflects upon the experience of the Muslims in the past century. So he gave 10 golden advices that I think we need to use as a foundation for us to begin reflecting about our own status. He says that it all begins by having, by pledging allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his deen. That any vehicle, any entity you may have engaged in order for you to better serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be secondary to that allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you engage your brothers and sisters, that it is the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes you brothers. That this allegiance is one that transcends any allegiances and lines up with any allegiance that we have. And that's something that we sometimes miss because some people think that it's a matter of conflict. That your allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen the divine guidance that's meant was not meant just for the Arabs or was just not meant just for the Muslims. It was meant for all of humanity. 
So if you expand your horizon and expand your intellect, you will see that that Pledge of Allegiance is one that organizes your allegiances. So your allegiance to country or your allegiance to society, your allegiance to the good that you want to bring about is one that is aligned. It starts with the foundation of Tawheed and the foundation of your allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He talks about how your reference, your point of reference is constantly has to be the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was but an implementation of that divine guidance that was meant to all of humanity in the life and in the circumstance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best that a human being can produce. And it was preserved for us. So when we reflect upon it and learn from it, we are given the tools by which when we recognize and learn our reality, we are able to juxtapose that guidance into living change, into a transformation of the very realities we live in. And so that being the reference, that being the foundation upon which we move and change and decide and, and ally and so on and so forth is but a culmination of the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us and a protection from deviance and a protection from us going astray. Sometimes when we find the clear word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the clear example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we decide that it may not be super fitting for us. It may not give us what our hawa, what our inner desires wants us to do. And so we look the other way, or we look for another reference. But not until and unless we hold on to that guidance and make it the reference point in our lives will we succeed. He talks about how it is the mission of any caller to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be very vocal against injustice to be somebody who enjoys the good and forbids the evil, that it is not sufficient to harbor good iman in your heart because it's not good if it's not translated, that it's not good enough for you to look at the evil and feel bad about it or avoid it, but rather you must figure out how do you change that. And I think this is a very clear example for us because despite the plight of our ummah, we are living in a situation where we're comfortable, my dear brothers and sisters. We sit in our couches and we see that plight through the lenses of TV or maybe the Facebook that we watch. But we're not in the middle of it. And it gives us no excuse to shed some tears in sadness and maybe even throw a few dollars at it just so that we can feel good. Instead of recognizing where does that evil emanate from? How can we eliminate that evil and how much? Are we complicit in it? And how much do we turn the other side? Or at least we throw our hands in the air and figure that we're too weak to change it. Or we're unable to change it. And we're in the middle of the belly of the beast here in the United States. Citizens, full rights, capable of changing and transforming the very society we live in by engaging civically and by being in the forefront of its change. Yet we relegate ourselves to the sidelines and relegate ourselves to the end of the row just because we think we're too weak or too small or the fact is my dear brothers and sisters that this is our reality and we're the ones responsible for changing it no matter how you know, big are the, the challenges and no matter how difficult it may seem and we do it with that alignment that I talked about where we align the well-being of our own society our own country with the well-being and the values that we believe in and we aspire to see, insha'Allah, in our lives. He talks about how our deen is the deen of compassion and love. That in fact it is one that should be a glad tiding to all people. That when he sent his companion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bashira wa la tu'assira wa bashira wa la tunaffira that be hopeful, be somebody who changes people's 
lives and ways towards the improvement and the betterment of their lives. Because nothing, my dear brothers and sisters, matters most for the well-being and the contentness and the happiness of the human soul than meeting that divine guidance from its Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and articulating it and, and inculcating it in every aspect of their life. You can't get happiness through material gain. You can't get happiness through power and, and coercion. You can't get happiness through things that are deviant from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the pathway that gives you contentness in this life and leads you, inshallah, to felicity and happiness in the hereafter. And so it must be the way of our da'wah. If you want to be strong in your iman and your aqidah, take yourselves with it. As long as it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's allowance, then our goal is to bring people to the fold of Islam. Our, our role is to show them that without divine guidance, that their lives are darkness, their lives are loneliness, their lives are just nihilism that is devoid of any hope or any aspiration towards their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us get them out of that misery through the introduction of this beautiful guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He talks about the importance of us knowing the time we live in and the tools by which we can transform the reality we live in. He talks about how being dignified and holding on to your freedom because once you say la ilaha illallah, you liberate yourselves from the rest of the chains of this life. He talks about how we are one ummah that we must feel the achiness that happens everywhere that this connectedness that we have is a source of celebrating this divine guidance of the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah, my dear brothers and sisters sitting in a room in which there is 28 29 person everyone the head of the muslim you know union in denmark is from sudan the head of the muslim union in germany is from lebanon the head of and so on and so forth they're leaders in their own society they face challenges that we may not even face here in America because of the socio-political and the, and, the, and, the, and the situations that are in their countries and they're figuring out how best to do it. But the one thing is clear is optimism and is hope. Generations of Muslims, Muslim Europeans, Muslim Americans are coming up. And so if they're given the, 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 the Islam that, that, that is needed to transform people's lives, first transforming them as individuals, transforming their families into families that are capable and able to withstand the pressures of living in this society and being productive members of a society that is very much in need to all the goodness that is in the people around them and then championing the causes championing the very causes that have brought about misery and difficulty in the lives of others. And we see it in, the, in our side where we came from. We see almost hopelessness taking hold of people. It is high time that for us in the West to take on the vision and to recognize that if we were to transform the world, if we were to be, inshallah, the hope for our ummah in the East or in the West, that we must take our Islam seriously. And that we must embrace it in a way that allows us to overcome the shackles of this dunya. That allows us to overcome the challenges that may face us in the way to it. What if you're challenged in what you say or you're challenged in what your deen is about? You can eliminate ignorance with knowledge. You can withstand injustice and overcome it by resilience and by steadfastness on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must embrace our role, we must embrace our future as a Muslim community in the West, as Muslim Americans. We can't shy away from it because we're a minority or we shy away from it because the challenges are too big. But rather we must say that we are the ones who declare every day and so many times in our prayers that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. And that no challenge is too big. And no difficulty is too insurmountable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the earths and the heavens, the King of the Day of Judgment, Azza wa Jal, is who we pledge allegiance to and who we line up the allegiances of everything else around us through His mercy and through His love and through His compassion and through His justice, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, when we are faced by the calamities or the difficulties around us, let us. Let us not 
cloud our vision. Let it not cloud our ability to figure out the path forward and to figure out how is it that we can live as honorable Muslims, as honorable believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as ones who are capable of not only withholding and holding on to our Islam and imparting it to our children, but rather we are the ones that can figure out the solutions to the challenges around us. We are the ones who can help transform societies ahead of us. And if it's a time of difficulties, then inshallah, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be a time of ease, a time when people inshallah will embrace the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in droves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength of the iman and the steadfastness of the position and our ability inshallah not only to understand our reality but to be able to shed the divine guidance of the Almighty Azza wa Jal on it in a way that will transform our realities and the realities of the people around us. I say this and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness and guidance. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu ghafurur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we can remind one another of aspirational talk. We need it. We all need to have the optimism and the hope and the iman which stems from the belief in Allah سبحانه وتعالى. That what we see in terms of change that's coming is something we see as reality. That we're not faced by the challenges or the problems, but we have to be also, our feet have to be implanted to the land of reality. Our minds and hearts can aspire to the divine always and to the better place that we hope for our people in this life and in the hereafter. But the fact is that we are challenged as a community and I'm not going to talk about external challenges because those are plenty and many are recognized but I'm talking about even within our own communities the Islam that the Prophet وسلم, has embraced and delivered to us is being challenged today because of others that don't like to see a free strong Muslim American community, or for that matter, Muslim European community. That the forces of autocracy and injustice that are rampant in our world, in the Muslim world, in the Arab world, and in so on and so forth, they're not happy and they're aligning with the forces of darkness that are also want to justify the injustice and the occupation and the apartheid and so on and so forth that are beleaguering our ummah. And what we're seeing today is waves of influence that are coming into the United States. People are organizing and planning how do we buy certain imams? How do we undermine certain Muslim organizations? How do we work so that we can demonize them, so that we can create this appearance that anybody who calls for Islam to be at the center of our lives, anybody who calls for Islam to be the guiding light for the millions of Muslims in the West and for the millions of people in the West for that matter, that those are people who are shaking it up too much, that those are people who are trying to present the version of Islam that will make Islam a dynamic force in one's life. We're seeing it. We need to learn as a community who are these people are, who do they, who do they work for, how are they being supported so that they can play this evil role. And when you look at the main issues of the ummah when it comes to the grave injustice, whether it's the issue of the Palestinians or whether it's the issue of the Kashmiris or whether it's the issue of the Uyghurs or whether it's the issue of the great places where there is grave injustices, you see people who are aligning just to pacify those issues, to overlook the grave injustices that are taking hold of these and they don't want the voices in our communities that are standing against them. When you see an Islam that wants to transform 
the realities not only for our people in the West but also in the East you find an alliance that is trying to undo any strength that our communities can have I believe and inshallah we should all believe that this change will come inshallah from our communities that we will transform the world and that despite the plight of our people in the East that their improvement their, the improvement of their reality will come inshallah from the progress and the prosperity of Muslims in the West and everywhere in the world. And so we can't be beholden to these forces that wants to pull us back, the forces that are killing and maiming people every day in the East. They don't like the voices in the West, and they are doing it every day. And inshallah, maybe we can detail more and understand it more. But anybody who aligns with these forces from our communities must be called out, must be brought to be accountable in front of the community and in front of everybody for their actions. We should not let that pass when we see people who are pacify the plight of our ummah, who will work with the very agents that have caused the harm and the injustice in our ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us inshallah steadfast on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make us able to withstand inshallah the pressures that we are all experiencing and be able to inshallah stand up to the issues of our ummah and be able to defend them, stand up to the issues of our American ummah and make sure to transform it and change it so that we will not allow injustice and we will allow dishonesty and, and, and the evil to, to take hold of our own society, but rather we will be the agents of this change. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and forgive us. Allahumma afu anna wa ghfir lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaaha. Wa zakkiha maulaya. Anta khayru man zakkaaha. Anta waliyuhu maulaha. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil'adli wal-ihsani wa ita'id al-qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi. Ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Fadkuru Allah. الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة